Today is the 1st of March, which means the monthly candle has just closed, which means we can go and look at the charts on a monthly time frame to see what that monthly close tells us about what could lie ahead for this month of March in the price action of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other altcoins. So let's dive straight into it. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing down below, click the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. If you want me to send you an email every time I upload a video, first link in the description down below, get on my email list, it's completely free. That way I can notify you of important updates and video uploads. And if you wanna follow on Instagram and on Twitter, and we have a free public Telegram channel too for more updates and content, the links are in the description down below. All right, so in the last 24 hours, we had a massive, massive pump in Bitcoin, where we went from under 40,000, it was looking a little bit bleak, the candle was looking like it could actually close in the red about two days ago, then we had a massive, massive pump, and now we're sitting back at 43,000, meaning look at this candle, it did close green. So before we get into the analysis, let's head over to the historical returns. And as you can see, the monthly returns, February ended up being another green month, as it often tends to do based on the historical track record. You can see in 10 years now, we have had only two red and the rest were all green in February. Now, for the month of March, the historic returns tend to favor red. Although we've had, obviously in, in 2013, we had a major, major green one, but 2019 was slightly green, 2021 was decently green, and this year it remains to be seen what is gonna happen. Remember in 2020, in March 2020, we had that major, major sell-off with the health crisis, sell-off in the stock market, and as a result, the sell-off in the crypto markets, where Bitcoin was down to about $4,000, and Ethereum was once again below $100. Now, while that was scary in the month of March, it actually, in hindsight, proved to be the best opportunity that we've had since the 2018 capitulation to be able to buy crypto and Bitcoin at the cheapest levels possible. So if we do get a red March, if we do get a major crash, it might actually be a really good buying opportunity, but we don't know if we're gonna get that for sure. Just because it has been red most of the time doesn't mean we can't get a green March, but the data favors March being a red month. So this month could be a tricky month. April, on the other hand, however, is majorly green. And even where it was red, it was only minuscule red with single digit percentages. You can see here 1.6%, 3.46% and 1.98%. So the month of April, historically since 2013, has proven to be historically a really good month. So at any point in April, if you would have bought at the first of the month in April, the worst you could have ended up was a negative 3.46% in any of the previous years since 2013. And more likely, you know, 50% here, 7%, 32, 33, 34, 34%. Okay, so again, that proves these dips over here, if you would have bought the dips and then held until the end of uh, April, that is what the historic data is telling us that would have been a good move historically. Again, there's no guarantee it's gonna happen this time. It could be different, but keep that in mind because it might set you up for a potential strategy if that unfolds, if we do get a crash or a dip in March to be able to buy that dip and hold it until the end of April. That could potentially be a strategy. Now for the quarterly, we still have 31 days left to go. So the end of this month will determine the quarterly results. You can see here Q1, it basically favored being a red quarter, right? You can see minus 37, 24, minus three, minus 49, minus 10, but we have had positive green quarters too. Like for example, last year Q1 was obviously very, very bullish, but this was also after a multi-year bear market and the start of a bull market, keep that in mind. So Q1 2022 does favor red, which lines up with March potentially being red, We'll see how this month is gonna end up. I am not sure um, what's gonna happen, but if you look at Q2, that historically favors green, right? And you can see 40%, 7, 62%, 123%, 159%, 42%. This one was mi minus 3.97, that's not bad at all, and minus 7.71. The only bad quarter was last year, the only bad Q2, really, where if you would have bought at the beginning of Q2, you would have ended up with a negative 40%. But 
again, let me stress, this was after a six plus month bull market, right? The major rally where we had Bitcoin go from 10,000 to 60,000 and we had the big crash in May where it dropped 50%. That was basically the result of that. But all the other previous ones in Q2 have favored being a positive uh, quarter. So again, if we do end up getting some sort of dip or crash in March, that might set us up for a good buying opportunity into the end of Q2, which ends up historically being a green. All right, so back to the monthly chart of Bitcoin, and you can see we got a nice green monthly candle close that was saved by this major, major pump. I'll zoom into lower time frames just now um, in the last pretty much 48 hours or so. But what is interesting to note now, we're in a bit of a difficult position where there are a lot of bullish and bearish forces, but we have to recognize that we were in an extended down period Basically, since November, there's been a lot of selling. We lost more than 50% of the value of uh, Bitcoin in the price. And it might be due for a little bit of a counter trend rally where the sellers have been exhausted. But we have to be careful considering this the start of a new bull run versus being a dead cat or a relief bounce that might take us into the high 40,000s or the low 50,000s even before potentially reversing and going back down. So what i think we need to do is continue to look at what the charts are telling us and take it a step at a time so on its own this potentially might be bullish you can see the wicks at the bottom right we had three uh, wicks at the bottom before a reversal here at the top we had some wicks over here before it reversed back down here double wicks at the top before it reversed so we got these double wicks over here with basically the body uh, body candle over here being the same, the same as this. So is there potential we start another leg up all the way up to the top? It is possible technically, but if we zoom into the lower time frames, which we'll do in a second, then you can see we are not yet in the clear and it might not be as easy to say that is what is going to happen. So my stance at the moment is that I'm cautiously optimistic that this could potentially turn into a larger bull run, but there is still potential for this to roll over and really still have a lot more downside before I share with you my prediction for March, let's recap the prediction that I mentioned on the 1st of February and see how accurate that really was. Now, what we could see is we could see bounces within this trend, okay? Because it has moved down 50% pretty much from the top of the $69,000 top, we can see bounces of several thousand dollars without it actually um, becoming more bullish. We've had three red candles, sure, we could have a nice big green candle here next to it, but unless we get to above this monthly candle open, right, January's monthly candle, so above 46,000, until we get above there, um, I would say there's still chances of that just being a lower high and then continuing lower. All right, so I basically said it's possible to have a green uh, candle right next to it because there was risk of after selling that much that we could get a bit of a bounce or an extended bounce. But until we get to above the yearly open or the open of the January candle, same thing, above about 46,000, I wasn't looking to look, I wasn't looking to get overly bullish. So that is pretty much exactly what happened. We didn't get, we went to just about the open over there, then we went all the way back down, right? So we went to about just under 46, then we went back down to 34, and now we're at 43. So what are the possibilities here still the same thing i will show you on the weekly in a second as long as we're under the 50 week moving average any bounce could still be a bull trap or a relief bounce that could be a bearish retest that could flip over okay so yes we could get a major bullish candle over here that breaks above the 50 week moving average if we do get that and we get a close like that for the end of march then it's time to consider are we possibly going for new all-time highs and was the bottom indeed this 33 34 thousand but as long as we bounce around here there's still complete potential for it to drop all the way back down to 33 and even lower so right now we're basically in a bit of a range here where we have to kind of get above this level and at the bottom we have like this level over here and until it gets above or below this range it can really go either way and maybe it will do both right maybe it goes above it 
and tries and take out some liquidity, some stops over here. And if maybe it goes below it, tries and takes out some more stops over there. It really depends what is going to unfold. There's a lot of stuff happening geopolitically in the world, the war with Russia and Ukraine, what's happening there, the tensions in Europe, all around the world, really the, the Russian ruble, the, losing a lot of value, the Russian stock market collapsing, banks uh, being closed in the Ukraine and Russia, things are going crazy, right? So what will the ripple effect of that be on the global financial markets? Is that something where this bounce that we're seeing right now, is that a relief bounce where it's gonna roll over and the whole market is going to crash? It is a possibility. Is it also possible that due to whatever is happening here, that people are starting to buy more Bitcoin around the world as kind of a flight to safety, maybe in the Ukraine and Russia, I don't know how they're able to buy Bitcoin if their bank accounts are closed, but you know, that might be something that puts some buying pressure under Bitcoin because if bank accounts are being frozen or you can't transact or the value of a currency and stock market is crashing, you know, if you put your money in Bitcoin, sure Bitcoin can crash in value too, but at least it can't be confiscated, right? If you have your Bitcoin, you can memorize your seed phrase, you can keep your money in Bitcoin, and if you have to, you can leave the country, you can go over borders and still have that Bitcoin with you. Whereas, you know, if you have it in a bank and you can't touch it, you can't withdraw your money because there's bank runs or the ATMs are limited or anything like that. So with the whole world watching, besides just the people in the Ukraine and in Bitcoin, maybe the whole world's watching and there's going to be people around the world, even if they're not directly involved in the conflict, who might be saying, well, you know, maybe I'm going to prepare a little bit. I'm going to take five or 10% of my net worth or my savings. I'm going to buy Bitcoin with it just in case this stuff happens in our country too right? Because we've seen the last two years, the world has been cr pretty crazy and it's not likely to get more peaceful and, and resolve anytime soon, in my opinion. So things are probably going to get worse and continue to escalate around the world. We've seen currencies collapse in Venezuela and Turkey and many different countries around the world where people are just losing their life savings because their fiat currency are developing. And with more and more of this being shared on global news and it's becoming a pattern where this is not just an isolated event in a single country, but it's happening in multiple countries, also in Canada, you know, where they froze um, bank accounts of people who participated in protests and stuff like that. Again, more and more people are waking up to the fact that, hey, maybe your money isn't as safe in a bank as you might think it is. And then people might start to think, well, what else can I do? Bitcoin. Right, because even though it might crash in value and even though it might drop still potentially another 50% in future, not guaranteed, but maybe, um, at least you can control your own Bitcoin and nobody can take that from you, unless of course under force or anything like that. But at least if you have that, you still have something that you can hold on to in a worst case scenario. And what happens if tens of millions or maybe hundreds of millions of people all wake up to this fact and start to buy Bitcoin, that could be something that could help Bitcoin decouple from financial markets. Maybe initially we still get a crash or something like that. But ultimately, long term, I am very, very bullish on Bitcoin. And I think it is going to go way over 100K in the next years. I don't know when. Could be sooner, could be later. But if you think about what's happening, basically, it is the only logical last resort store of wealth where you can put your money and with it becoming more and more global with all the exchanges all the possibilities to be able to buy it i think a lot of people are going to end up buying bitcoin the question is just going to be how low does it go before the ultimate low is in and sure maybe it can drop into the 20,000s, or maybe even a flash crash slightly below that before it's all said and done over the next few months but again in my opinion that would be an amazing buying opportunity and after that i think we end up going way way higher so if you manage your risk and you don't overextend and you don't use leverage, then in principle, buying even around these levels over the next years should prove to be profitable. But of course, you know, if it drops and you're able to buy those ultimate lows, not financial advice, of course, make your own decision. But, you know, if you can buy from 40, 30, $20,000, if it gets there, I think in the long term, that's going to be an amazing, amazing buying opportunity. So basically my prediction this month is the historical data shows that March can be a red month. So I think it's completely possible. Maybe we retest these lows once again. You see we had three wicks over here. So downside wise, it is possible we get a wick 36, 35,000. That is possible. Um, upside wise, 
I think we probably try and take out the liquidity here and some stops and stuff. So uh, forty-six and a half thousand dollars, probably. If we get a big green candle, it is also possible. You know, maybe we had one like this, and maybe we get another one, and we get a weekly close above the fifty-week moving average. Then things start to get interesting for the bulls. So let's just switch this to weekly. And you can see over here exactly where I drew that line, that horizontal support to. That is where the 50-week moving average currently is at. So that's going to be very important for a bull bear um, flip scenario. Okay, And I've shared this in multiple videos, so I'm not going to go into it in too much depth. But you can go and look on the weekly chart. Put the 50-week moving average on there. And you can see in general, when it's above there, it's a bull market. When it gets below there, it's a crash or a bear market. We've been below it, so um, there's still potential. Even if we retest this, if we go to 46, 47, remember it can wick above it too, right? Like you see it wicks below it. If we wick above it, so even if we wick to like 51 or 52K within the week, but we come back down and close below it, that would still be a bearish retest and it can roll over and the target would still be the 200 week moving average. So as you can see, we are in a bit of a tricky situation where we're in a bit of a no man's land where there is potential for it to go up or down. But remember what I just said, long term, I think the direction is up and higher than that $69,000. I think we end up going a lot higher over the coming years later this decade. But in the short term, if we fail to make it back above the 50 week moving average, there's still chance for it rolling over and potentially crashing who knows when, maybe in May, June, July, August, um, later in the year before the bearish trend is complete. But I think even if that happens, after that is done, I think we'll get a huge, huge move to the upside. Just like we had back in March in 2020, we had this major crash where we went back down to $4,000 BTC. We went to the 200 week moving average. If you get there to the 200 week moving average, it is a major gift in my opinion because it doesn't happen very much in the past and it's proven to be a very, very good buying opportunity. So if we get around this area into the 20,000s, I think major, major buying opportunity, but it is possible that we might not get there. So if we go back above here, we get a weekly close above the 50 week moving average, we get a second weekly close above it. I think that really increases the chances of the trend flipping back to bullish and us entering an extended, potentially multi-month bull run once again. So this month is going to be key I'm not going to go into Ethereum and the altcoins too much because this video is already kind of long. Basically, they're going to follow Bitcoin. If Bitcoin continues going sideways or higher, Ethereum and altcoins are probably going to follow and vice versa. If Bitcoin crashes, Ethereum and the rest of the market is going to crash. So one thing I just want to share also about the altcoins, I shared this inside our intelligent cryptocurrency private membership, um, also in detail in the monthly update that I did is that here, um, I posted this on February 23rd, is that I was seeing a lot of bullish RSI divergences on daily altcoin charts and even on the S&P 500 and the daily, meaning that at this point, even when things were looking like they were gonna crash, the charts were already kind of showing us that we might be getting an extended bounce soon simply because of this RSI pattern. Um, I'm not gonna explain it now in this video, but basically it's one of the most accurate patterns for spawning reversals in advance before they happen. And just to show you, I also posted this on that same day, February 23rd. You can see over here, Wu could be worth the play, bullish divergence, um, basically when the price makes lower lows and the RSI doesn't confirm it. It was at 41 cents over there. We also had this horizontal support over there. And you can see what happened since I posted it. We're now at 51 cents, but it did end up wicking a bit lower. It went to about 34 cents first and then ended up going higher. And this is actually present in a lot of different altcoin charts. You can see it yourself if you go through different charts. You can see all these bullish divergences, a lower low, but a higher low on the RSI. And when there's this many divergences on different charts on a daily time frame, it is very likely that it plays out. I would be surprised. It's not a guarantee, but it's a pretty high uh, success rate where after you see a divergence like that, it can bounce. Doesn't mean it can't bounce and roll over and go lower again. But from the point of the divergence, we should be seeing this bounce over here, which is exactly what we've been seeing the last few days. It could result in a more extended bounce because you can see if you go and look for these divergences, we haven't really had any on the daily time frame for pretty much a whole year, right? Every low has been lower here, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low. You can see over here, like all these lows um, are basically confirmed. And here, 
this is where we had another little divergence. So you can go and look for this yourself. It's pretty interesting. But when you see these divergences, they usually end up playing out as some sort of bounce. So here we had the divergence and you can see that was a gain of about, let's see, what is it? Of 50%. So when you see these divergences, you can get 50 to 100% gains from them. And after that, doesn't mean the trend reverses forever. It can just roll over and go back to lower lows. But we could see a bit of an extended bounce. Like I said, with Bitcoin, it's a possibility. If we go up 50% over here, maybe we go up um, 100%. It is possible we get a decent sized rally. But in my opinion, maybe March ends up still being a red month or a neutral month. And then April can end up being a really big green month, just as it traditionally tends to be. Another interesting thing here over here is this indicator by Rainbow Runner, where basically he says this indicator hasn't flashed since the July 2021 move, where after the sell off, we started that big rally where we went from 30K to 69K. And he said that indicator just flashed as well on that low of 34,000. So obviously we will only know in hindsight, but is there potential that this might actually be the start of a major rally or is it still just a bounce that maybe goes up 50 or 100% and then ends up rolling over before we get a final low? That is of course the question. So I stick with just let's see what happens this month. If we do get weekly closes above the 50 week moving average, it really strengthens the bullish case and potentially we might end up going a lot higher. If we fail to break above the 50 week moving average, even if we wick above it, but close back down below it with the weekly close, then the bearish case is still intact. We might be forming a lower high and we might still end up going lower. But long term, we're talking about, you know, maybe the next year, maybe the next few years, I think prices go way higher in the short term, whether we go into the 20,000s or not still in the next few months, that remains to be seen. If it does, I think it's gonna be a great buying opportunity that even if it does get above there and you end up buying in a little bit higher for that confirmation, once we get above it, you can see this went from 5,800 to almost 14,000. So almost a three X from when we got above it. You can see over here when we got above it, it went from pretty much that $10,000 level to 60,000. So these moves don't happen much where they break above or below the 50 week moving average. And in general, when they do, they are followed by multiple months of extended movement above or below whatever direction they break in. So this month is going to be telling, keep an eye on that 50 week moving average. And until then there is still risk of the 200 week moving average being hit over the next few months. Also, I've been getting a lot of requests still for people asking me when I'm going to reopen the membership to intelligent cryptocurrency, because you remember I closed them in October last year, which was around about over here because I thought we were getting close to the top and we were going to get a drop, which is pretty much exactly what happened. I still haven't opened since then, but I think what I'm going to do is in the next week or two, I'm going to do a small temporary opening for anyone who values the information who wants to get inside. Be sure to get on my email list. I will send you an email then to notify you when the doors are open so you can join. I'm only going to open maybe for about a week for anyone who does want that info. And then for the rest, obviously, I'm going to keep it closed still till later in the year when I will finally fully reopen. So guys, get on the email list, subscribe, join the social channels, Twitter, Instagram. There's a free Telegram channel in the links down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.